Hi, this is Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. Now, I'm going to expose my dirty secret. One day, <clears throat> I had dated a guy. This is when I was a little younger in the Lord and a whole lot younger in age. Anyway, I was dating a guy. And in this dream, this guy, uh, well, this isn't a dream, this is reality. I was dating a guy at the time, and I broke up with him momentarily. You know, didn't really want to break up. You know how you know me and Jesse. I, well, I broke up. And while I'm dealing with the details of the painful parts of the relationship, God decides, as he would, in his loving way to give me a dream about me and in this dream I'm not seeing me I'm in the dream but I think I'm me and I'm not me is somewhere else and I'm gonna tell that to you in a moment trip me out listen in this dream I am like some type of investigator or whatever I was, I wasn't really me. And I'm walking on to this property where this this long apartment complex. And I hear a man upstairs on the terrace and a woman downstairs and they're arguing back and forth. Now, as they're arguing, I want you to guess which one is me because there are three people to this story besides the investigator. All right. Now, I'm sitting there watching these these two talk and the woman is crying she's saying I don't know all you have to do is get your jumper cables and jump I got to get to work my car won't start woman I ain't got time for all that I'm busy I got more important stuff to do figure it out and she's like I don't believe you and he's like, yeah, believe it. I'm busy, baby. I ain't got time to be jumping up and down. You should have thought about that. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, boy. So they're going back and forth. Now, I have to interrupt this little silly exchange. And uh, <clears throat> I, I excuse me, uh, do you guys know a, a Mr. So-and-so? I was looking for a client of some type. Okay. Now, the man upstairs, let me describe him to you. He had orange hair, golden orange hair, like the color, the color of honey. I'm trying to think. Okay, the color of honey and in the sunlight. Yeah. And he has an earring in his ear and he's wearing a sweat, a, a, a muscle shirt. And all his muscles are bulging. And you could tell he's very proud of his physique. Oh, yes, he struts around like a cool peacock. So anyway, he doesn't have time for girlfriend downstairs. Girlfriend downstairs is dressed in a nurse's outfit. She's desperate to get to work. She's frustrated. So when I asked, she says, she interrupts her argument, and she says, well, you can ask him. He knows everybody. And I said, okay, thank you. So I asked him, do you know Mr. So-and-so? Well, he says, just a minute. I'll be right down. What? Say what? You'll be right down? You don't know me. You know her. You're humping her in the sheets. You don't know me. You couldn't come down to give her a jump on her battery? But you could come down for a total stranger? What is up with that? Does that sound stupid to you? Kind of weird now, isn't it? Think about it. Okay, you thought about it long enough. Now, next thing that happens is she's standing there. He comes downstairs, and he's trying to help me figure out who Mr. So-and-so is, what apartment, and he struts right to her front door. Now, she's standing there like an idiot, she unlocks the door. She allows us to go in her house. He marches in like we're all just supposed to go in. He sits on the recliner 
leans back and kicks his feet up. I wanted to back slap her right across the back of his head. She stands there. He looks at her. Woman, go get me a glass of ice water. <gasps> Who said no? No, you did. You did not do that after you refused to jump her battery. I am livid. And it's not even my problem. It's her problem. I don't have to get to work. She does. So you can tell it's real obvious they got a little something, something going on. And she goes, when I say I wanted to snatch her back, she goes like an obedient little trained seal to get this man his glass of ice water. I follow her into the kitchen. I say, why are you getting, why are you doing this? Why do you let him treat you this way? She stands there like an idiot. I, I, don't, I don't, I don't, he does this to me all the time. I keep putting up with it. I love him. Shut up. I want, I, ooh, you talk about somebody wanted to get violent. Calm down. Peace be still. Now, for the rest of the story. While she's there sniveling over this glass of ice water to go and train as a trained seal, goes and marches it over to him, I wake up. I wake up seething. I am boy. I'm at the boiling point. Lord, how could somebody be so stupid? Did you see what she did? How, why would you have me dream about somebody so stupid? How could she sit there and spend her time with a man that doesn't care about her? He is just a, a convenience for him. He's just going to take advantage. And when she needs him, he doesn't have time. But he's got time for a total stranger. What a fool. How could she sit up there and be so stupid to sit up there pitifully talking about, I love him. I want to choke her. I wanted to slap her. I want to scream at a woman. What's your problem? Okay. Well, I got through ranting. Yeah, I ran it real good to the Lord. I didn't like that dream. Yeah. You know what God said? Mm -hmm. That was you. I looked up. I said, you know, Lord, I walk with you for a long time. But that, that was the first time you really hurt my feelings. I was, I was too through. You going to tell me I act like that? And what God was saying was, it wasn't the acting like she acted. It was what I put up with that made him see me just like that. And he wanted me to see how I was being seen. Desperate. Pitiful. Girl, if you don't wake up. That was the beginning of my turnaround for another level of inner healing. When God tells you you are needy and desperate, baby, you better get on your J-O-B and start hounding him for inner healing because you will get nothing but a bunch of good-for-nothings playing you, using you, screwing you, taking advantage of you, laughing at you, having nothing but contempt for you, disrespecting you, and using you some more. Wake up. Smell the coffee and get your head screwed back on right. Well, now you don't have to guess who was who. I was the pitiful one, not the agent. Of course, not the pretty guy. I was the pitiful, the pitiful fool. And I pitied that fool, but I wanted to choke her too. 
And when I woke up, I really woke up. I mean, God woke me up. He opened my eyes. I smelt that coffee. And I got my act together. That was the last time in my life I've ever been pitiful. Thank you, Jesus. Now, do you want to be pitiful for the rest of your life? Or do you want God to help you see you so you can really grow and be healthy, solid, and whole? Pray about it.